Good afternoon and um, welcome to FP Markets Daily Market Update. Um, coming to you from a wet and windy Sydney. Um, what a difference a few days makes really. Um, beginning of the week, end of last week, uh, obviously massive spread of Omicron variant of coronavirus markets taking almost falling into three, three fall. Uh, and and safe haven dollar well on the ascendancy. Uh, a few days later, everything seems to be fine. Uh, another great day in the uh, in in Wall Street. Um, Nasdaq, as you can see here, finished up 1.2%. Uh, S and P 1%. Dow Jones, similar amount. Um, and a positive start here in the uh, Asian session as well. We're a few hours in, or certainly more than a few hours into the Australian day. Um, ASX 200 holding up there, just like 0.2%. But Asian bourses looking even stronger. Um, it's 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 an interesting it's an interesting comment I think from from investors and and from the market because this reaction is saying that we're not seeing too much of an effect of the new pandemic but I'm looking out the window into the middle of the Sydney CBD and there are not many people around many restaurants cafes etc have all closed over the last couple of days into Christmas and I'm not sure whether they're going to be opening up till the new year. So to me, that would have an effect on the economy. Call me crazy. Um, and, and I think maybe we've just, I think maybe, you know, we've, we're swinging and it's a bit of a volatile market and we are trading this. This, this is pretty much as we've spoken about a few times this week. This is our main catalyst for trading. Um, there's not too much coming out in terms of data. Um, and so it really is a sentiment risk on risk off trade during the week, um, but it, we've got to trade what we see and and the markets are saying it doesn't seem too bad. I mean, some of the stats that we're seeing is it's 40 to 45% less of a chance of hospitalizations with the Omicron variant than we have with Delta and, and various other um, COVID variants, but still it is spreading, numbers are increasing, uh, certainly over in here and, and, and across the rest of the globe. So let's have a quick run through the currencies. Um, not surprisingly, Aussie sort of like just moved up a little bit, um, um, risk on, not as, as I think I said yesterday, we're not making massive gains as well. And I think there's still in the longer trend of things, I think uh, once we get back to, I suppose, more normal market conditions into the new year, I think the downtrend um, is is still what most investors are looking for, especially when you're looking at interest rate differentials between the Fed and the uh, RBA. Kiwi sort of bounced off that level quite nicely, hasn't it? It was big figure higher as well. Um, no, not going great. I suppose we're actually seeing more of a reaction in stock markets than we are in currencies, which is uh, quite an interesting um, situation. Once again, cable looking at that, it does look like there's a, a little bit of support along this this daily line. We're back up to sort of 133 and a half. So, you know, once again, probably the favoured um, the favoured trade at the moment. We are getting big figures out of cable in a day, as you can see here. Just yesterday, 132.30 up to 133.50, big figure in a bit. Um, it, it's probably the preferred um, the preferred move for most uh, day traders at the moment because we are getting those decent moves. Um, I, I would think, you know, that's that's obviously going to be the target for the guys on the downside back around what 131.80 now and those lows, which are 131.70 ish. I think that is the target, as we said yesterday, a quadruple bottom going on there. Um, Euro, like that's bounced nicely as well. Interesting. It has been look from what the end of November. We've traded this range a few times, look once, sort of twice, three times, four times, five. Um, going to be interesting to see if we can break above this sort of uh, 134 level. Um, to me, you know, next resistance probably up at 115, but we, we've traded that. So I think a few people will, will be looking to fade that move, especially if they're sort of siding with me and looking out the window and not seeing much economic action. Um, and that, that'd be across the globe. Um, dollar yen, a lot of options interest. We're hearing around 114. And I think that's sort of stimming moves on the top side. But um you know, once again, with stock markets flying high, you would expect that maybe to break a little bit, a little bit higher. Or obviously, conversely, if we do see a change of sentiment, then it, it will knock down again. Um, CAD's gained some ground against the dollar, as you can see here. Oil's bounced again. I think we're well above 70, 70 dollars a barrel. Um, and and with the general uh, overall green greenback bearishness coming through to the market, you know, we're down a big figure as well from the from the highs just uh, at the end of last week. Um, so plenty of movement going through the currencies and like, you know, choppy again in the Swiss. We talked about this a few times. It has been really chopping about in this range. Bulls will be looking to pull, pull, 
pick some up, I suppose, just ahead of this sort of like relatively short term trend line with, you know, even more down here. But, you know, we based here a couple of times around about 91.60. So could be interesting to see where we go there. Um, just off uh, onto my bits and bobs sort of chart page. There's that move we talked about nearly back up to $75 uh, a barrel in WTI. Bitcoin just trading. like in, Interesting, it's trading off that, that trend line around there. It's sort of gone quite well. And, and you know, with a, a severe lack of fundamentals to drive um, the cryptos, we do see a lot of just basic um, basic chart patterns working for them. As you can see here, like one, two, three, four, that four decent decent touches on a on a trend line means that there's probably quite a few people looking at that. So certainly, if you're trading actively trading Bitcoin, you're probably making a decision around about these levels at the moment. Um, and they they got gold bounced as well. So. It, it's a strange one because gold is not trading its safe haven play and hasn't been really for, for a long time um, as as purely as it used to do. And, and you know, the last couple of days is probably a good example of that, that we've seen gold rally while stock markets have rallied. And, and, and you know, it's that dollar play is sort of superseding the uh, the safe haven play on uh, on gold. Um, just skipping through a few other things. So US 10 year, that barometer is just keeping an eye on that. That has just slipped a bit, not surprisingly, um, obviously in line with currencies appreciating against the dollar. Um, one other thing just before I do leave you and wish you the very best, uh, something to keep a keen eye out. And I've, and I've mentioned it a few times, here's dollar turkey. It has been an absolute roller coaster and will probably continue to do so so we've sort of had pseudo intervention uh, by the turkish central bank and they've done that um, by sort of guaranteeing exchange rates out to three and six months on the swaps it's not pure intervention and, and certainly you know if they're guaranteeing those rates where are they going to be when they they come to fruition um, but it has brought some stability <laughs> stability is probably the wrong word it, it has brought it it's brought the dollar turkey back to a um I suppose it's a more comfortable level than when it was attacking 19, but still, we, you know, it's it's had a massive crash. Um, as you can see here, for those wondering, this is a Fibonacci projection that I've put on. Generally, only put those on when you, you know you it's breaking to fresh levels that haven't been seen before. Um, that's the move I sort of covered. It, it, you can sort of pick and choose any of them, um, but that was 100% when it's sort of getting up to 10 and then bang. It did, interestingly, it did seem to sort of work this 161.8. It did slow down a bit, but then it, it massively took off and uh, and we're back down lower. So it is a horror to trade at the moment. Obviously, there's some plenty of opportunities in it, but also there's high risk as well. So I think leverage is coming on that across the board and some brokers are uh, not allowing trading until market conditions get back somewhere near normal. But keep an eye on that. That That is one for uh, the lovers of roller coasters. Um, that's about it from me for today. If you need anything from us, uh, FP Markets, please do drop us a line, come on live chat or give us a call. We'll be happy to help. Um, good luck with your trading and uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much.